Iceland. The land of ice and fire. But what happens when the ice melts? In this special edition of Reuters World News, we take you to the edge of a volcano and the forefront of scientific research on whether the rapid retreat of glaciers and ice sheets as a result of human-induced climate change will trigger an increase in volcanic activity. I'm Tara Oakes in Liverpool. Our climate and environment correspondent, Gloria Dickey, travelled to Iceland to join a team of volcanologists and filed this dispatch. And if she sounds out of breath, it's because she is climbing high up the Askia volcano, past bubbling pools and hissing vents. I'm looking out over the site of a massive eruption that occurred here at Iceland's Askia volcano at the end of the last ice age that completely transformed this region as the glaciers were disappearing. And that whole time period saw a 30 to 50 fold increase in volcanic activity here in Iceland as the ice was melting and disappearing. And with climate change, scientists are concerned that the same thing could essentially happen again as we are seeing massive reductions in Iceland's glaciers Due to global warming, there's concern that we're going to see a new era of volcanic activity here in Iceland. And Askia, Askia is one of those sites of concerns. So we're coming up to Vidi Crater and we have to be a bit careful because this volcano is actually in a state of unrest. It's an active volcano. And in 2021, scientists noticed that after years and years of deflating of the kind of surface going down, which means it was becoming less active, suddenly things changed and the region began uplifting, indicating that more magma was being created or coming in underneath the volcano. And so scientists are concerned that we're pretty much primed for an eruption right now. And there's concern, you know, even just today, as we're near Vidi Crater, that you could have a steam, a sudden steam eruption like what was seen at White Island in New Zealand in 2019. And so we're just kind of trying to minimize our time in this area in case anything does happen. As I get closer and closer to Vidi Crater and its milky cyan waters, the smell of sulfur, that that rotten egg smell is just infiltrating my nostrils, so I know, I know that I'm getting closer. I'm accompanying scientists with the Icelandic Met Office who are here to measure the gases and the pH level and the temperature of the lake. This, this crater, as well as Lake Askia, was formed during an 1875 eruption, and scientists are worried that as the ice disappears, covering Iceland due to climate change, that another very devastating eruption could take place here at Askia. That is the gas detector just going off now as we measure the gases and all the steam blowing off the crater. And I'm with scientist Michelle Marie Parks and she's warning tourists to turn around. You know, people, people are coming down the steep crater wall because they want to swim in Vidi Crater and its beautiful, beautiful waters, you know, that are perfect for Instagram, but there's a real hazard here. And Michelle is trying to, to steer people away from, you know, what she sees as risking their lives for a few minutes in those waters. This massive caldera is filled with rhyolite. And there was also an eruption here in 1961 that created these deep, jet black, shiny lava rocks, basalt rocks, which most people are more familiar with. You can see the history of this region, you know, just just in a few minutes, the layers and layers of different rock types that mark this region's eruptive history. Gloria joins me now to talk about her reporting. Gloria, you've made it back from the land of ice and fire. 
What was it like being there? I mean, Iceland is always stunning. It has some of the most beautiful scenery in the world. I'd only ever been there before in the winter. So this was my first time in summer, which is still actually very cold. Um, But it was also my first time getting so close to some of the country's active volcanoes, which was thrilling. And so in your reporting, you say that the Askia volcano had a significant growth spurt in 2021, inflating by 11 centimetres with a little more than four inches in just a few months. Can you explain what that means in layman's terms and why it's significant? So scientists call this phenomenon to be inflation or uplift is generally what they go with. And basically that means that the ground is kind of swelling upward and outward as more and more magma likely pushes into the reservoir below the volcano. Now, a four inch uplift isn't really detectable to the human eye, but they use a lot of different complex scientific instruments to kind of monitor those changes for unrest. What's triggering this? That's basically like the big question that scientists are trying to answer right now at Oscar is what has kind of triggered this change that suddenly magma and tons and tons of magma, we're talking, you know, million cubic meters of magma is now coming in under Oscia because for several decades, the volcano had been deflating. So it was becoming less active, if you will. But since 2021, that's no longer the case. And so they have some theories. And one of those theories is climate change. So scientists basically know that when ice disappears off of the Earth's mantle and the crust, that triggers a pressure change in these Earth systems. And it creates all these different dynamic processes that are happening deep, deep underground, such as more magma is melting from the mantle. So more of molten rock is being created. It's also creating fractures in the Earth, changing stress fields and making certain magma reservoirs less, it can make them less stable. And so when you think of that, you're thinking, okay, well, if the ice is disappearing in the past, that's happened from just coming out of ice ages. But now places like Iceland that have a lot of ice left are again losing their glaciers because of climate change. So essentially, there's this very kind of complex interaction between ice and the earth and volcanoes. So the retreat of glaciers and ice sheets due to climate change, that could trigger an increased volcanic activity? That's the fear. More magma coming in can trigger more eruptions and more violent eruptions. And it's not something that people normally think about, that climate change could affect volcanoes. But basically, scientists in Iceland, it's a great place to study this phenomenon because you have a lot of ice and you have a lot of volcanoes. And scientists know that when the last ice age ended, Iceland actually registered a 30 to 50 times increase in volcanic activity in that period during and after the ice loss. So we know that this has happened before. And the big question is, will this happen again? And is it actually already happening now? The tricky thing is that scientists don't know how much magma it takes to kind of trigger a pressure change that trips an eruption in the magma chamber. So there's an uncertainty with all of this as to when or if these volcanoes, including Askia, will in fact erupt. So you say the Askia volcano has the potential to erupt with the same explosive power as the 1980 eruption in Mount St. Helens. What's the potential? impact of such an eruption on Iceland right now? This is a tricky question, but in terms of kind of the scale that volcanologists use to measure the explosive force known as the explosivity index, Askia has in the past erupted at a level of VEI-5, which is a Plinian eruption, a big explosive eruption. And we know that that was what Mount St. Helens was too when it erupted in 1980. So basically the concern is that we know that it has this capability to have these huge eruptions, you know, Vesuvius was a VEI-5 as well, I believe. The dynamics would slightly differ. Mount St. Helens had a bunch of different complications to it, which made its blast so dangerous. It had this like lateral bulge. Askia would probably not be like that. And in fact, it has had more mild eruptions, but there is concern that it, we do know that it has that potential. So scientists can't rule it out. And in Iceland with this increasing magma production and the potential for eruptions, how are local communities and tourists responding to this threat? What measures are being taken for their safety? I think a lot of people have been looking at what's been happening in Iceland out on the Reykjanes Peninsula over the past year. It's had a number of eruptions in that system, which is completely separate from this phenomenon that is not believed to be tied to ice loss or climate change. But at the same time, it's kind of this molten reminder of what's lurking underneath Iceland, right? We have people who live near a lot of these active volcanoes In the case of Katla Volcano, which is down on the southern coast, 
It's near the town of Vic. And Katla has had very, very dangerous eruptions in the past. It's also a volcano that's under the glacier, under the Vatna Yokel ice cap. And so when you have this kind of upburst of super hot lava coming out of a volcano, that melts the ice that's on top of the volcano. And that can create these torrential floods that can go towards towns or tourists in Iceland, which is most people have probably been there as a tourist. And so the government, you know, uses scientists, like, like those with the Met Office, to kind of very closely monitor these volcanoes. They create plans, they create evacuation plans, they do risk assessments. But now they're also wondering, you know, do we need to start thinking about climate change and suddenly having a huge surge in eruptions in Iceland? Because I should add, Iceland is on track to lose roughly half the volume of its ice by the end of this century. And so the research that's happening in Iceland is unique, right? They have government funding and the volcanoes are there that they can study. Um, but you say the implications of this won't stop in Iceland. So can you talk about other regions where similar things might be happening? Yeah, I should add that like the work that's happening in Iceland right now is one of the first, if not the first, kind of field study that's actually looking at will climate change impact volcanoes. That's what drew our attention to it, because I too had never thought about any kind of connection <laughs> between volcanoes and climate change. But this is a much bigger global issue if this phenomenon comes to pass, which is that there are hundreds of volcanoes around the world that are directly under glaciers and ice sheets. And it's not just in Iceland, it's in the Andes, it's in Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, and it's also in Antarctica. So not that I need more reasons not to lose sleep at night, but what are some of the scenarios that these sleeping giants awakening from climate change would look like? Yeah, again, like Iceland is the most sensitive spot to these changes in terms of it's above like this tectonic plate boundary, there's a plume. So we would expect like perhaps changes to happen there first. But if we were to see a sudden uptick in volcanic activity in the Andes and other parts of the world, a lot of those effects would be pretty local, people who live near the volcanoes. But again, you would have these giant ash plumes, which can contain things like carbon dioxide, which we know is already really quite bad for the climate. So sometimes volcanoes cause a bit of cooling to begin with, but then that could lead to longer term global warming because we have much more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere from these eruptions. The other even more concerning kind of doomsday scenario is that there are believed to be more than 100 volcanoes under Antarctica and the West Antarctic ice sheet. And if those were to suddenly pop off as that big ice sheet recedes, it could expedite or speed up the loss of the West Antarctic ice sheet, which is basically the lever that's controlling sea level rise around the world. So you could have volcanoes erupting under the ice sheet, melting more of it down, and kind of creates this vicious feedback, right? Wherein by you keep melting more of the ice, more volcanoes erupt, and sea levels rise. What was the feeling among the volcano experts you met in Iceland? A lot of these volcanologists that we met down at Askia, you know, this is what they kind of live for, right? They live for volcanoes. On the one hand, it's like quite grim and they're very concerned about what this holds for the future. But, you know, some of the folks that we met were just so excited about the kind of concept that Askia could erupt. And the, the day that we were there, one of the volcanologists who'd been coming to Askia since 1990 was like, I've never seen so many scientists here before just scrambling to figure out what's going on. We, you know, there was, there was more than a dozen people out taking various measurements on the lava fields. Some people had a boat. So it was kind of like this free for all <laughs> at the volcano. But yeah, I mean, in terms of the, yeah, the people monitoring the ice, it's probably, you know, it is quite sad for some of them and the people who live near these glaciers and they watch them disappear. But I think for the volcanologists, of course, there's concern and fear, but also like volcanoes are really cool. Volcanoes are so hot right now. Exactly. <laughs> to read more on Gloria's story and see some of the visuals from Iceland, check out Reuters.com and the Reuters app. Reuters World News is produced by Gail Issa, Sharon Reich Garson, David Spencer, Christopher Wall Jasper, and Jonah Green. Our senior producers are me, Tara Oaks, and Carmel Crimmins. Our executive producer is Leela de Kretza. Sound design and music composition are by Josh Sommer. We'll be back on Monday with our daily headline show. Make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast player 
or download the Reuters app.